this time on Highway Through Hell. Head on disaster. Wow, what a nightmare. Strikes in Alberta. This is absolutely insane. Pushing heavy rescue. Guys, watch yourself. Back up. Into battle. Looks like a war zone. And testing the limits. Hold it! Of every man on the crew. Stop! Guys, 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 guys. Get out of there, Johnny! Get out of there! On the highway through hell. The last line of defense is a heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because closure is not an option. Sees Coquihalla Highway, maintenance crews are battling against a sudden and unexpected storm. I'm doing the fast lane here and it's built right up. Start at 10, from 14. Yeah, go ahead. Supervisor Richard Enns is coordinating the counterattack. The trucks are moving still, but they're starting to have trouble to get up the hill here. Just to advise, we've activated the chain up lights northbound on the snowshed hill. This truck ahead of me, he's been struggling here for a bit. As trucks start to lose traction on snowshed hill. Got a guy jacked right here southbound, just before the first from the wayland. Okay. Big Al from Quiring Toy enters the fray. We got a couple guys across the road there. Yeah, come down to this one that's Jack Knight in the bus lane. These two jackknives could back up traffic for miles in a span of just minutes. The trailer brakes are on there. No, he's gonna be driving here in a minute. I'm gonna pull out of the way, so you just coast yourself up against the guardrail here, and then you'll be not jackknifing. Al, is that guy gonna be mobile? Yep. Oh, he's going on his own here now. Put her in second gear. Al jumps on board to help the second trucker steer out of the jackknife and down the steepest part of the mountain. Easy. Slow, slow, slow. This speed all the way down, lower gear maybe. You're okay. Let off the brake. There's no money in it for Al, but he needs to keep the traffic moving. Slow, slow, slow. Hey, both jackknife southbound on Al Street. Yeah, I'll cut you uh, back down the hill here. I got one just below the office here. He's uh, chained, but he can't make it. With more bad weather blowing in, Al won't be slowing down anytime tonight. One minute we're going one way, the next minute we're going different directions. Sometimes that's what you gotta do up here to exist. 1,200 kilometers northeast. Has it gotten worse since I was out there? The next morning brings a blast of winter Turn it into a rain. to the highways north of Lac La Biche, Alberta. It's getting get pretty dangerous. Veteran driver Venance Richard is heading north towards Conklin on Highway 881. Some place can be icy under there, and we don't see it because it's snow on the road. Heavy Rescue Alberta is preparing for the worst. You know, when we have weather conditions like today, problems are going to rise on the highway. With Jamie Davis coordinating from his dispatch center in Edmonton, he's relying on his Alberta crew to handle those problems. 
where you kind of have a feeling, you know, a bit of your hair standing up on the back of your neck. You kind of know those days. This is one of them. Just after 1 p.m., Colin McLean gets an urgent call. So how bad is everything up there? From the RCMP. The RV truck has no cab anymore. OK. Uh, there's no tires. Everything is on the rim because it burst on fire. OK. 140 kilometers farther up the highway. What happened there? Fuel tanker crashed into another truck. Traffic on Highway 881 is completely stopped. A fuel tanker and logging truck have collided head on. Trucker Venance Richard arrives just minutes after the crash and captures the aftermath with his phone. I saw some smoke in front of me. Oh, geez. I saw that big flame. Highway 881 to semi truck. Emergency crews race to evacuate the injured. But one of the only two routes north to the oil fields is completely blocked. So how far away is you from the scene? Uh, I'm just coming through about kilometer 110, I believe, right now. But yeah, we could be working on this one for a while. This wreck will be a test for Colin as lead driver for Jamie's Alberta operation. One year ago, Colin was brand new at this. Two weeks ago, I put him in the rotator. And today, he's taking on the biggest wreck of his career. I'm definitely having to step into being the senior guy. It's nerve wracking. It's normally a two hour trip to the site of the wreck, but in the whiteout conditions, Collins' drive is already stretching late into the afternoon. Pretty much looks like a northern Alberta goat trail. To... Where the f*** is the goat? Never a dull moment on this highway. Back in BC, the storm front that hit last night has been battering the Coquihalla all day. I guess what happened was the car was firing the cab and failed. We're heading down the hill, something going on. Somebody's done something they shouldn't have. So, for the second night in a row, Al Quiring is patrolling the mountain. A truck jackknifed. Somehow that uh, had hit the center media and cement no posts, knocked them out of place. How do you think a guy does this? Smoke inside. All I can't see. Then I stop the truck and take out key and park great pull and I jumped outside. The truck started rolling backwards out of control. Finally smashing into the concrete median. Concrete blocks laying in two lanes of traffic in a 120 kilometer an hour zone. It's a recipe for disaster. All of a sudden a dash fire. I could smell antifreeze in the air. It's on a dash fire, you overheated. If a vehicle's on fire, one of the first things that happens is the electric short out and everything's gone. And in this case, the lights were still on. No, it was just a rat hose blew. Overheated and blew the steam. Sometimes when there's smoke, there is fire, but sometimes when there's steam, it looks like there's fire. No fire. You should get retested with your license. You're a menace to the highway for jumping out of a truck without putting brakes on. With spun out trucks all the way up the hill, Al has no time to spare. He moves the truck out of the path of traffic and calls the trucking company to pick it up. Welcome to America's hottest top line. Guys, hot ladies are waiting to talk to you. Press two to connect free now. Ladies, press one now. Guys, press two. We got some kind of a dating line here. Oh, you know what? I better get my eyes checked. I should have dialed 1604. That sounds better. They might send up another tractor, or they might send a tow truck to come and get you. But, because uh, I'm not going to be able to tow you out here tonight. Never heard of that happening here. Let's get back to that other number now. Wow. This 
is absolutely insane. Back in Alberta, after four hours in whiteout conditions, Colin arrives at the scene of the crash. A lot of money that's been sitting for a long time. And Jamie's most powerful record, the rotator. Highway 881 has been at a standstill since late this morning. Got logs all over the place. So hot that the, the fire melted the aluminum tank. What a nightmare. Everything just exploded, almost like a bomb went off. It all falls to Jamie's new senior operator to get the job done. You get to that kind of a job, it makes you shake in your boots a bit. So I need him to step up his game. I need him to be the guy he can be. Well, what an absolute disaster zone. In northern Alberta, got logs all over the place. New lead driver Colin McLean is facing one of the toughest recoveries he's ever seen. So hot that the, the fire melted the aluminum tank. After a loaded fuel tanker collided with a logging truck. What a nightmare. Six hours ago. The trucks collided on Highway 881. Oh, jeez. I ran over there. Semi driver Venance Richard was one of the first witnesses at the scene. I saw one guy there was crawling over the logs. He was in pretty bad shape. The guy was soaked wet of fuel, broken feet. The two injured drivers were airlifted out. Incredibly, both survived the crash. Wow, look at that frame. This is half inch steel. It's even been reinforced with an inside beam as well. And it's just completely bent back. Probably explains why the motor's sitting over there, completely detached from the truck. One truck lost control, veering across the highway into the path of the second truck. The impact sent the tanker hurtling off the road and left the burning logging truck and its cargo blocking the highway. I'm on this highway all the time, and I could have been one of these guys. I could have been the logging truck coming back with the tow. The truckers escaped with their lives, but a third driver didn't make it. A pickup following the tanker collided with the logging truck's cargo. The driver of the pickup died at the scene. It's the first thing that hits you. Somebody's passed away in the wreck, and you're taken by that. And I don't care who you are. You get onto a job site, whether you're police or fire, that impacts you. This is one of the worst wrecks I've worked on in my 15 years of towing. Fourteen hundred kilometers southwest in British Columbia. Gotta get her done. The storm has finally blown through, but it's left damage in its wake. We got a call from the RCMP to come attend a semi truck that's uh, wiped out coming into Hope. John's heading to the Highway 3 and Coquihalla Junction. So the roads are a little slick, uh, a little slippery. It's right there. We'll have to go up and around. Jamie's new recruit as lead driver in BC still has a lot to prove. I don't know if he's good, bad, or a superstar. I don't know. I'm here to do a job. The job is to keep the road open, keep the trucks out of the ditch, and make the company money. Back the Tundra up. The trucker lost control and smashed his tractor into the ditch. 
I'm walking up to the wreck and I'm looking at it going, okay, well, it doesn't look too bad right now. It looks pretty good. As I get closer, I'm like, ooh. Damn. Cab's ripped off. Since he joined Heavy Rescue, John's required backup from Jamie's brother, Jason, on his major recoveries. But not tonight. If I don't have another truck coming to help me, I don't have guys with more experience there doing it for me, I gotta prove myself right here, right now. With me being all over the map these days, I need these guys to hope to step up and get their game on and make things happen out in the field. All John's got to work with is an old 25-ton wrecker, HR-64, and his only help... Here, you hold the button, I'll pull. ...is rookie swamper, Phil. Now, just not too fast, man. Never too fast, straight. Okay, a little bit. I gotta make sure I secure that cab before we climb into it. So that's my first objective, is to get that cab back up and secured. Try to put that back on. Okay, go ahead. If I pull this too much now, that cab could come right off. I think we're good, but all we can do. John straightened out the cab. Now he must secure it. I'm just looking for a way to possibly secure this onto the trashy right now and then I could pull it up onto the uh, road. I think if we uh, throw a strap through and around yeah. and ratchet it together. Where do you want me to throw the strap over? Like right over the roof? No, through the doors. Oh. And then to the other side. We're both new to this team, but he's new to the heavy stuff. He's never towed heavy vehicles. Yeah, right through the windows? Yeah. And then Both through. windows look open? Yeah. Oh, you, uh... I got the lock off. unrolled it. Do it this way, right? Um, take it out of the ratchet for now. What's that strap going to do? Tie that off. And we start pulling the truck out of the ditch. Then I'm pulling, I'm pulling, and... Something's not feeling quite right. So I stop. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sign. The wheels are caught on a highway sign, mowed down in the crash. Still looks like a war zone. In Alberta, more than six hours after an explosive accident between a logging truck and a fuel tanker, the police investigation is finally over and the recovery is cleared to begin. We got multiple people from different companies getting everything all done, said, put together. It's gonna be a while before we get this all cleaned up. An accident like this there's kind of a pecking order of how things happen. You have to have patience. They can go on and on and on and on. Okay, we have. Last week, Colin made a critical error on a big job. I wish you would have shown me a picture of that. Assigning a junior driver to assess the wreck. We just wasted a whole day. Wasted resources, wasted people's time. <laughs> Today, he can't afford any mistakes. Just after 8 p.m., his first reinforcement arrives. Let them get all their stuff out of the way, and then we can come in and do our job. Operator Johnny Tipton. And 10 minutes later, Swamper Gord rolls up in the flat deck. Their first job is the white pickup. She was just driving along following, uh, you know, on her way to work or on her way home, and uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. You know, I've dealt with many fatal accidents. 
in my career, and they get to you. But uh, you just put them aside and carry on, right? OK, well, what do you want to do, Gord? Pick her up right here with the deck, get the wood out. OK. But even the smallest vehicle in the wreck won't be easy to recover. There was logs everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. You look at that picture and you're like, where do I start? In northern Alberta. Can you pull that out? We'll wrap a chain around it and winch that log out? Yeah. OK, let's get in over here. Yeah. Good. Eight hours after a deadly crash between a logging truck, tanker, and a pickup. A bit more. Lead Colin and Swamper Gord need to get the traffic moving. Go, you're good. Keep going. You look at the truck and just the carnage, you can see how quickly things can change for people. Everybody watch yourself. It's just a blink of an eye, and they're gone. Okay, good. The pickup is off the road, but Colin's heavy work is just beginning. The logging truck and fuel tanker are completely destroyed. They can't be towed. They'd be using the rotator as a crane pretty much most of the night, picking stuff up and putting it on deck trucks. So Collins called a second flat deck to the sea. I'll come in here, pick it up. You just go right in underneath it. I'll drop it down. You're good to go. But he'll need Jamie's low bed trailer to cart out the bulk of the wreckage. And he's missing the final member of his team. Kelly Davis, do you read me? Jamie's middle brother, Kelly, left Edmonton hours ago, fighting brutal conditions on the roads. Kelly Davis, do you copy? We have a job to do. And we got to get it done. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Back in BC. Sign. Frustrating. It's a highway sign that he ran over and squished. New lead driver John is still trying to clear a demolished tractor at the entry point to the Coquihalla. Every wreck is unpredictable. You can think, oh yeah, it's, if I pull here, it's going to come this way. There could be a tree stump there. There could be anything there. You know, there could be a road sign stuck in the tires. I'm sitting there looking at it going, OK, now what? I don't have a chop saw. Can't chop that out of there. If I damage the rear end, how am I going to get us back to the yard? I'm just going to keep yanking it out. His only option is brute force. Got to give eventually. It's going. There it went. It broke the sign free. Didn't damage anything else. Hang on, John. We made a good choice. Then we just kept pulling her out. With the RCMP eager to reopen the lane, John can't afford any more delays. Just like that. Okay. Do you want the fork pointing inward or outward? Okay, point in. Like that. But his only help is Philip, a novice swamper. Now, how do I go around the axle? Go around the axle and then come around with that piece. And then we come over here. OK, done. All right, comes the fun part. Just before hauling away the wreck, John checks the air brakes. Damn, got to do airlines. The airlines are severed, locking the brakes. 
In order to release them, John needs to hook up the compressed air from his truck. Looking for my air pieces for my for the air tank. I'm not sure exactly which uh, bag I put them in. One tiny connector has brought the recovery to its knees. Where did I put it? I've been here for eight hours now and still haven't moved. Just south of Conklin in northern Alberta. There's one that I think just opened up one lane or not yet. So we can get going through. Yeah, that'd be nice. Traffic on Highway 881 has been at a standstill since noon. Yeah, guys, we're working on it. We're cleaning it up as fast as we can. Those guys have been waiting for a long time. Get them out of here. They don't need to be waiting any longer. The fiery head-on collision has left a huge recovery for Colin McClay. At this accident, nothing is told. Colin really has to just use low beds to get everything out of here. You on the air there, Kelly? Jamie's brother Kelly is on the way, fighting brutal conditions on the road. Colin needs his trailer to recover the destroyed tanker. It's, just, it's been a long day. Oh, f Rick, grab me that end right there. So he turns his team to the burnt out remains of the logging truck. Well, I'm gonna wrap the frame. Colin will have to lift the chassis up and onto the flat deck. It's a pretty tangled piece of mass. But there's almost nothing left holding it together. We'll see how that goes. OK, we're good. We're good. OK, we're going to do the blue line. White line. How are we looking, Johnny? There might be some pieces that fall off. Any kind of bolt or cross member that was holding anything in was probably weak. It was definitely fatigue. Hey! Guys, watch yourself. Back up. Hey! Back up. Alberta's Highway 881. Can you settle that down a bit? Pull tight on that? Heavy Rescue is wrestling with a fragile, burnt-out remains of a logging truck. Ready to watch their heads. Lead driver Colin needs to maneuver it onto the flat deck before any more debris comes loose. Watch yourself. Keep coming. Bit more, bit more. Whoa! Right there, right? Coming down. I'm holding it. You guys get her chained down. Traffic on the major route has been stuck for almost 12 hours. Okay. But the only way to clear the remaining debris is one piece at a time. Good. Hang on, hang on. Coming down, Johnny. How are we looking, Johnny? Got that? She ain't going anywhere there. As the flat deck carts away what's left of the logging truck, Heavy Rescue faces the toughest part of the recovery the fuel tanker deep in the ditch. T5 to 150, are you there? They'll need the final member of the crew, Jamie's brother Kelly and his low bed. I need you up here in front of us. Holy f Kelly. Grab some gears, would you, bud? Time for coveralls and to get to work. In my whole entire life, I've never seen a tanker busted up or split up like that.
probably 60 feet off the road, into the bush, laying on its side. We just got to uh, bring up to the unit, and uh, we'll be getting her tired. Ugh. What do we got here, Kill? Handling a wreck and, and going, you know, from start to finish can be a marathon and it can be hard on people. I don't know. What do you want? Yeah. You can become kind of delirious in some points in time and in the wreck because it goes on and on and on. The plan is to position the rotator on the front of the wreck and the second wrecker at the back. They'll pull the tanker onto level ground and re-rig for their next move. But as Jamie's crew heads down to rig up, they find a new danger. Right now, we are sitting on top of 6,500 liters of spilled gasoline soaked into the ground. You can smell it in the air. There's a strong odor of fumes here that can make you pass out. Back on BC's Highway 3, new lead driver John must unlock the air brakes on the wrecked tractor before he can tow it home. So all I would need to do is hook up into here and then plug into it and then open that up. Air brakes use compressed air to release and unlock the wheels. But the tractor severed its airlines in the crash. John needs to hook up to the supply on his wrecker. But from is hooking up to that piece. Looking for my air pieces for my for the air tank. He's missing a small but vital coupling. Where did I put it? If John can't release the brakes, he can't tow the tractor himself. Ah. For some reason, I can't find all my earpieces. If I had to call somebody else in, then it's not my wreck anymore. It's ours. John's only option, Jerry rig a connection out of his spare parts. Got some adapters here. I'm just making one up. The morning freight run on the Coke is now only an hour away. 90% of the stuff that you buy, eat, sell, whatever, is transported by a semi-truck. And having these trucks not being able to get to where they need to get to, it hurts the economy in a big way. You want to open the valve? Red line only. Shut up. John's connection is leaking. Come on, you. What size do I need? Uh, 20 mil, not that one. Of course, police are sitting there waiting. They want to get this road open. And I want to do as best as I can, as fast as I can. There you go. That's it. Okay, uh, push that yellow button. Let's see what we got. How are we? We're good. The small piece I'm gonna throw up on the deck. Yeah. Got it all hooked up. We're ready to roll. Yes, finally. I did my first wreck by myself, well, with Philip's help, but no other truck, nobody else to come and help. It's all mine. I just proved to Jamie Davis that I can do this. He's doing the work, he's getting the job done, but I'm not 100% sold on him just yet. On 881 in Alberta, <laughs> lead driver Colin and Jamie's brother Kelly are working in a gasoline-soaked ditch to make the last recovery of the night. I'll grab that, Colin. 
Oh, I just want to make sure we're tight here. Yeah, I'll do that. So we're working hard, we're breathing, we're inhaling the stuff. So we need to cycle in and cycle out. Fumes from the tanker are making it difficult to breathe. Go get some fresh air. The rotator is equipped with oxygen masks, but the crew is focused on the recovery. The guys, they were thinking about clearing the road, but they weren't thinking about the actual dangers to their own personal health. And as heavy rescue gets ready to drag the fuel truck up to the highway, <coughs> the fumes pose a new threat. Big concern is that it's going to run over the charge of steel in the ground spark, and then we've got fumes, and then we've got ignition. It's like a bomb. OK, boy. After the worst accident so far this season, you can smell it in the air. Heavy Rescue needs to pull a battered tanker through a field of gasoline fumes. Oxygen, fuel, fumes. There's a possibility it's going to light up. That's going to be a big fire. With fire response standing by, the crew must pull the wreck slowly up the hill. If the jagged metal hits a rock, be making a very bad day go worse. A single spark could cause major trouble. Much safer if you're over here. If it does blow up, you just get knocked down the hill. You don't get the shrapnel. Not liking that. That's scary. Okay, that's good. Okay, Johnny, hang on. Ooh. Nobody's on fire. No big explosion. So, so far, so good. With the tanker finally on the side of the road, Colin needs to get it onto Kelly's low bed. You want to grab it off the inside of the frame? Well, I wonder if you saw it. You got the controls and think. That's your job. Think. Well, Colin also gets his first look at the bottom of the tanker. I don't think there's a straight part on the frame. Tore them right off. What are you thinking, Colin? I'm thinking, why don't I just run one underneath the belly, too? Bring my boom up over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Colin will bring a high line from the rotator to the underside of the tanker. The second wrecker will hook a high line to the rear. Together, they'll lift and rotate the tanker onto its wheels. Kelly, are you on that side? OK, just pull that through. Got it. Give it a couple feet. will only work if the tanker stays in one piece. That truck is fatigued to the point where it's ready to fall apart. Stop! Stop, buddy! Call it! What? You're ripping the tank off of the frame. It's already ripped off the frame, but the axles aren't coming off the ground. I see it. He's trying to pick it up from this side, trying to do a deadlift on it. But the axles have ripped away from the chassis and are digging into the ground, so the truck can't roll over. Can we get a chain on those and suck those axles in? Basically, I've got a suspended load of about 10,000 kilograms but I still need to get a chain and a line onto those axles. After hours of exhausting work and intense pressure, Colin makes a risky call, letting Johnny crawl under the wreckage. It is Colin scene, I respect that, but there is a safe way to do that. 
go around the back side of the wreck, hook up the axles, throw the chains underneath the load. You don't risk yourself under a load ever. Get out of there, Johnny! Stop, stop. You're ripping the tank off of the frame. It's already ripped off the frame. But the axles aren't coming off the ground. It's 4 a.m. on Highway 881 in northern Alberta. Can we get a chain on those and suck those axles in? Exhaustion and pressure to get the road open are weighing on the crew. Safety is really the number one issue on any accident scene on any job that we handle. You don't risk yourself under a load ever. But eager to finish the job, Colin and driver Johnny take a big risk crawling under the suspended load. Colin wanted to spin it and throw another line to it, and that put him in harm's way. No, no, go on the outside. We'll do them both at once. Just get in there, put the chain on, and, and get out. Colin wants to do the best job possible, but puts himself in jeopardy quite a bit. Right. Get out of there. Uh, nobody saw that. Get out of there, Johnny. Get out of there. OK, just let me pull the axles in. If Colin can't get the axles back in place, he won't be able to set the tanker down on the low bay. Are they coming in at all? Go, baby. Okay, Johnny, set your head down a bit. Okay, hang on. But one of the axles is still digging in. So Colin goes under the tanker again and re rigs the chain. Ah. Hang on, just relax. Yeah, no. Give me that. After all, did you see that? That was beautiful. Well, there's a reason we changed the trucks out within five years, but it's important to have top line, you know, front line equipment that'll do this job, keeps the guys safe. The final task lift up the tanker and back in Kelly's low bed underneath. Guys, watch yourselves. The rigging needs to hold long enough. Here's your one chance, Fancy. Don't let me down. For Kelly to back under the tanker. Come on, Kelly. Get him in there, would you, buds? Tell me when, Colin. Keep him coming. As long as he's underneath it, I can put it on him now. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. Watch yourself. Johnny, let her down, bud. Perfect. Couldn't even have done it better myself, Colin. We got everything that we were supposed to do loaded up. Nobody's hurt. All the equipment's still working. Despite a few risky moves, it's a big victory for Colin to see traffic moving on Highway 881. My level of confidence in Colin has increased twofold over last year. He's handling bigger jobs, and he's evolved into a lead guy. I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's dangerous, but it's what I do, right? I run heavy wrecker. It's just something I love to do. Have a good night. Enjoy your safe. Next time on Highway Through Hell. This one's going to be a challenge. Five wrecks in one when a semi plows off a bridge. All right.
hell did he do that? Stranding holiday travelers. <laughs> you be careful. And forcing Jamie's newest driver. I hope John can pull us off. To take on a raging river. John, up. go up. With his recovery falling apart. holiday travelers be careful. and forcing Jamie's newest driver I hope John can pull us off to take on a raging river John, up. Go up. with his recovery falling apart on the highway through hell the last line of defense is a heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster because closure is not an option. Christmas is just three days away. Now, this is Christmas. The busiest time of year on BC's Coquihalla Highway. <laughs> and a bad time for drivers to battle icy roads. A strong temp just enough to turn it into a catering. They had the super flow and the single flow going up the hill there. Well, we have a light snowfall up over the summit at the moment. Air temperature of zero, road of two. Plow drivers like Michelle McKenna work through the night to keep the highway open. Here coming back down the hill, throw some sand out. It's a full assault on the mountain. We got trucks as many as we can get on your way to work at this point. But Highway 5 is already turning to chaos. Is in the median ditch and a trailer sticking out on the hammer lane. Time for Al from choiring towing to go to work. That's the green goblin, Al. The truck was in a 30 or 40 foot deep ravine, nosed in. The semi was heading northbound when the driver lost control, plowed off the road, and spun into a jackknife. The position of the wreck will make it tough. But with the Christmas freight and travelers, Al wants to keep one lane open. Should be able to get it out. I'm just waiting for Gord to come and grab hold of the ass end of this thing. This ravine is pretty steep here. Just before 2 a.m. Welcome to the party, Gord. Al's partner, Gord Boyd, pulls up to the scene. We got a truck and trailer in the ditch facing the wrong way. Their biggest challenge will be keeping the fully loaded trailer from tipping onto its side. This is going to be fun. Al will rig two lines to straighten out the rig. Gord will pull on the back end and redirect a second line via Al's bumper to hold the semi upright. So if it did flip, 
Gord could actually hold it using my truck as an anchor. Just balance the load. You might have to tug a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah, ready? Well, let's see if we can finesse this puppy out of here. You had to have two points pull. You had to have pull from the side, and you had to have pull from the back. You could not have done that with one truck. Straight off the third line to the cable load on the front bumper. Balance them. I don't think I need to pull ahead a little bit. I'm getting pretty close here. These jobs usually happen in three or four short pulls. They never happen in one long, continuous pull. Just freewheel the right one. No, that's good, Gord. While Gord repositions. There you go. I got to run this other line down to the front. OK. Al needs to straighten out the tractor. So we can back it up with a little bit of finesse. Back it up onto the road, maintain the vehicle into the lane that we're working in. Do it in one lane. Do it as quickly as possible, because you don't know what's coming around that corner next. They win. I think you're pretty good there, Gord. Absolutely amazing what two guys who know what the hell they're doing can accomplish. <laughs> oh, I'm just glad that you were here. Yeah, no shit. We never had traffic stopped once. We did that job in one lane of traffic, <laughs> and the truck was still drivable after we got him out. <laughs> The next morning, at Jamie Davis's new Alberta dispatch, the boss is back on the road. This is the first time I've been in the rotator in six months. Last trip before I shut down for Christmas. With the holidays, Jamie is short-staffed, and he's got a long list of towing jobs for his regular customers around Edmonton. It's a chance for me to jump in the truck and, and just go do a job, and it happens to be the coldest day of the year because it is cold. The double B-train tanker in the ditch. An overnight storm has left wrecks all over the roads. They said there was a big wreck between the 11 and the 11 a Simeon versus a car. That's a major job. Pull that out of there. But Jamie's too busy with simple toes to tackle any big recoveries. It just beats a guy up driving by all these crashes, but I got my plate filled, so I got my jobs to do, and that's Alberta. Very icy right here. It's a pretty treacherous day. Feels good to get back in the truck again, you know? But this weather is tough. Even on Jamie's most powerful wrecker, the Rotator. All the hydraulics are moving so slow. Even with the pump on and running. When it gets that cold, things don't move in a hurry. Here we go. This is the kind of day where things will happen later in the day. With Jamie tied up in Alberta, he'll be counting on his BC crew to deal with any wrecks back home. There's so much going on, it's, it's almost overwhelming for me. I have to trust that these guys are going to do the job for us. Two hours north of Hope. Wow, quite the distance down. Rushing water. The hood's probably ripped off, so we'll have to try and recover that. BC lead driver John is one of the newest members of Jamie's team. Oh, look at that one in the water. He'll have to step up in a hurry. This one's going to be a challenge. How the hell did he do that? Late yesterday, a tractor hauling a load of campers hit an icy corner, knocking out a railing and plunging off the bridge into the river below. 
John left to scout the scene right away. But the sun was down by the time he arrived. He hit the bridge pretty hard. He took all the railing from one side of the bridge right off the bridge to the other side. The location made the wreck too dangerous to tackle in the dark. Drivers have been stuck all night. Been away for two weeks. It'd be nice to get home. The main route for communities north of Whistler, BC, Highway 99 is completely blocked, stranding holiday travelers at the worst possible time. Could be the biggest job of the year. I hope John can pull us off. I need him to do that. He's down 50, 60 feet into the creek. Trailer sticking up, trucks destroyed, travel trailers all over the place. This wreck has everything that could go wrong written all over it. Wow, quite the distance down. Two hours north of Hope, BC. This one's gonna be a challenge. A multi-part wreck has shut down Highway 99 two days before Christmas. This is one of the biggest jobs of the season. Guy over a bridge, off a bridge deck, and it's got campers on the back. This isn't just come and hook this thing up and pull it out in 20 minutes. So far, Jamie hasn't been sold on John, his new lead driver in BC. This will be fun. Today will be John's real test. I need him to take care of it and uh, hope he can do it. Highways wanted to open by 10 a.m. That's not gonna happen. My ultimate time goal right now is three o'clock to get this out of here and this road reopen. Phil Renault is on his way in Jamie's new 50-ton wrecker, HR-116, the most powerful truck Jamie has in the BC operation. How much further is the accident? On a 45 minutes or so. But for a job this size, even 116 won't be enough. Jamie's called in a big gun, a 60-ton crane. Whenever someone goes down there, we've got to tie them off because if they get sucked in the water... Oh, yeah, you're gone. We're on a bridge. We're 60, 70 feet up in the air to a straight drop into the water. It's snowing. It's icy. It's cold. The big baby's here. We can get her done. With the tractor, trailer, and the campers, Jamie's team is faced with five separate recoveries. I'm Ralph. I'm Phil. Nice to meet you, Phil. The single lane wooden bridge can't support the weight of the crane plus the load. Isn't that sweet? The operator will have to set up on the road and extend his boom for the lift. Then we'll take that trailer off, that trailer off, and we'll see about getting that one out. Safety chains and straps were put in place for added security during transport. And the three campers are also connected to ball hitches mounted on the main trailer. The first trailer, it's still attached on the ball, yet it's dangling off the main trailer at a pretty good angle. You can get your hook on it and just pull it back, then we can secure it. How sturdy is this trailer? I don't need to be taken out before Christmas. None of us do. John quickly secures the trailer to keep it from slipping further. Trailer secure. Okay. John will rig two lines from HR-116 to the front and back of the first camper. They'll pull the camper back onto the trailer deck. Once it's stable, John will rig it so the crane can lift it free before they tackle the next camper. That should be good. trailer back up onto the main trailer. We're gonna back the crane in. We'll hook him up. We'll just get it out one at a time. Hooked around. That's perfect, buddy. There. 
hoping to wiggle and muscle the hitch free to get the camper off the deck. The ball looks like it's close to snapping out. No, it's not coming off there. Let me come down and take a look. Like that lever's got to come up? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Someone has to go down onto the wreck and release the hitch. If it's gonna go, it's gonna go that way, so stay upstream yeah. of it. I'm the head guy in charge, and I've always been taught in life, do not assign a job to somebody else you're not willing to go do yourself. You think I've done this before? There's always a risk. Once you hit it, it could pop off right away. I have a three-pound sledge. You want to try it? If you lift it and pound it with the hammer on the front. Released. You come loose? It's out. Perfect. OK, before you do anything, let me lift. Yeah. Well, that, before you do anything, let me get out. Yeah. OK, coming up, guys. How's it looking? Get up a ball. Keep going. I'm gonna boom down so you can get your rigging off. Okay, horse, well, that's good. The crane can now move the camper out of the way. One trailer off, two more to go. Bring it down another four feet. John rigs up the second camper for the crane. You okay? Yep. Good. This is a tough wreck, especially for a guy coming from the city, a guy who hasn't worked the mountains. OK, he's on his way down. Once again, John will have to release the hitch by hand. My feet are braced on whatever I can brace them on. And if I slip, I can slide right underneath this trailer and straight down in the water. It's dicey for John, because he's right in harm's way. Just be careful. 260 kilometers southeast. Ken Monkhouse is heading to a call up a remote logging road. Me and my Forest Service roads that I can't seem to get away from no matter what I do. I've had a few white knuckle rides. I won't kid you about that. One of Jamie's longtime drivers, Ken. If I try to come back down backwards, you need to get, end up in a ditch or over the embankment and die. Had a close call last season. There it goes. On another mountain back road. Look out! I'm okay now. It's all good. This year, Ken's not working for Jamie. Always looking for the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, I guess. But uh, Ken's gone right now to work for another company. He's a great guy. Ken is a great guy. Today, Ken's working with Jordy DePerrin. Yeah, Ken Monkhouse is working for me. Jordy runs Mission Towing, a fourth-generation family business. I've grown up in tow trucks. I used to ride with my grandfather uh, as a, a kid. I needed a pillow to see over the dashboard. They're big shoes to fill. For me, that's the biggest thing is, what would my grandpa do? How would my grandpa do this? I always tell him, I haven't got big shoes. And they're not that big to fill. Just do the job right. But this time, the pressure is on Ken to do the job right. This is his first time working with the boss. Huh. Somebody didn't like their <laughs> anymore. <laughs> this car is burnt. All the wheels are burned off. The glass is all exploded. Basically, it's just a shell of a car. It's a mess. Nothing salvageable. So how do you want to do it? A rule of thumb is always turn it around and keep the heavy end up front. That steers. Block off one of these trees and spin it sideways. And grab the front end and take the front end out first. So we take those good old trees and we put a chain and some block and tackle. 
Okay? No. They're right to you. Beautiful. Right there. <laughs> now it's facing the right way. <laughs> Once we spin it around, we've got to get up to the main road out of this little goat trail that we're in. Good enough. Good there? Beautiful. It's not going to stay on the wheel dollies getting it up this hill. We're going to have to be a little bit crude and drag it up to the top of the hill. This is off-road towing. The whole time I'm thinking, make it to the road, make it to the road. Oh, there's the engine. That sucks. I've moved hundreds of burnt cars before, and I've never had a motor come out like that. A little bit of a move, and what was holding that engine in, just let go. Just take it right up, Ken. Yep. Drop it on the road. So now we've got to come back down, rehook it. It's part of doing those jobs in the bush. Good. Take a couple chains and a strap. We'll wrap it around the motor. I'll lift it up with the tow truck. Drive it up to the top of the hill, bing, bang, boom. It's a sigh of relief that this engine is now at the top. Let's just get this car loaded and let's go. Good. I don't think this is how they do it in the factory when they make them. <laughs> Beautiful. You work too hard. I like working hard. That was my first time working with Ken. He wasn't the give-up kind of a guy. He kept going at it. Everything went fairly well. Jordy's happy, and uh, we got it done. It was a good feeling. Pretty happy. At the bridge, John climbs farther down the trailer deck to unhitch the second camper. We can't rush this stuff. We use a piece of rope as a safety line. So I've got one hand wrapped around this rope. Go! Right to your hand! But I'm hanging on to it, making sure that that hand doesn't release or let go while I'm using my other hands to manipulate the hitch to get it to release. Hang on, he's undoing the safety chains, bro. Chains are free. OK, safety chains are free. Okay, it's unlocked now. Just hang on, he's gonna get out of there. We got the hitch off, and then I actually had to cut the strap on the other side of the trailer. Tell him to take tension! Lift a little. Okay, hold it right there. Here I am underneath this trailer. So I gotta make sure that the crane's got all this tension. So if I cut that strap sitting underneath it, and he's not secure. Stop. On BC's Highway 99. Again, you have no idea how long it's gonna be closed, eh? I see Jamie Thunder up there. Holiday traffic has been at a standstill since last night. Jamie's guys are on that one. A tractor trailer carrying three campers burst through the guardrails on a single lane bridge and landed in a rushing river. Down to take tension! Lift a little. Jamie's new BC lead, John, is trying to release the second camper. As he cuts the final transport strap. John, you be careful. He needs to make sure he's out of the way if the trailer swings free. Whoa. Can you come towards me a little bit? Okay, I'm clear. Highway 99 has been closed for almost 20 hours, and that's weighing on John. 
the new guy, there's a lot of pressure on me to get the job done on a timely manner. With the camper securely on the ground, John assesses the next challenge. And he doesn't like what he sees. That trailer is underneath the tires of this truck. The third trailer, it's the worst of the bunch. It's completely off the main trailer, and it's actually twisted underneath. There's no way that we're going to recover this thing all in one piece. Two hundred and twenty kilometers south. Ken Monkhouse's boss, Jordy, is en route to another recovery. We're climbing the Chehalis Forest Service Road, which is a logger that goes straight up this mountain. So we have a customer that went up here fishing, and a freak snowstorm hit. The truck slid, and it's gone over the bank. Luckily, he's OK. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good to see you. Wow. But the truck is far from OK and it's stuck in a bad spot. It's pretty intense. It's a little bit more of just a little recovery. It's quite challenging, actually, looking at it. The problem is all these trees that have fallen here. Trust me, I hit them all on the way down. I believe it. Wow, you're lucky. I'm going down the bank, and I see all these trees and stumps sticking up. Hey, hey, hey. I'm looking at the angles of the path that's got to come up the trees. The stumps that are sticking out of the ground, there's a, it's like a path that goes straight to where my wrecker's sitting. I've got one shot to put this thing onto its wheels. If I don't put this on its wheels right away and it drags over five feet first and then flips onto its wheels, it's going to make my job a lot worse. Unreal. That is definitely a challenging recovery. With Ken Monkhouse taking the burnt-out car to the scrapyard... I want to be right in the boom, like right here. Jordy's brought a young mechanic with no towing experience to help out. We're pulling 10,000 pounds of weight, at least. This job here is the maximum that I do with this wrecker. Out of my way. Do you want them to cross over? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, my god! This terrain is just absolutely crazy to get through. Jordy rigs to the pickup suspension. OK, let's go back up. I have one chance to put this truck onto its wheels. It's got to land on its wheels. Physics are right. It should flip. Back on Highway 99, Jamie's crew is looking for a spot to chain up the third camper pinned under the trailer. You couldn't have put it in the faster water. I can get on the axle! Can ya? But time is not on their side. Almost there. Oh! Whoa. Darkness is just two hours away. OK, he's got it around the back of the trailer, so now he's just got to figure out how to hook up. John now has to rig the chains around the axle so the crane can try to lift the camper. There's nowhere to step. The water is deep, and it's running fast. I'm down there crawling around, trying to see what I can get at, what I can't get at, where I can hook and where I can't. Boom down! Boom down! Can I hook to here? Can I step at this spot? Am I going to fall? We hooked up to the axles, just like we did on all the other trailers. Up. OK, go up. I think they would just pick it up and bring it out as it's coming up. Not a bitch. Do I have it? You're bringing frame up only. The 
NBC's Highway 99 has been shut down for over 24 hours. And Jamie's depending on his new lead driver, John, to get it open. Boom down! Boom down! Oh! But a badly damaged camper is stuck under the wrecked trailer. Up! Okay, go up. Not a bitch. You're bringing frame up only, everything else is staying behind. It's just ripping apart. I'm shaking my head. Pieces of the trailer are flying out. Water's running so fast, they're gone before you could even think about catching them. Down! Back down! There's nothing we can do about it now. It's gone. Keep lowering. Oh! Whoa, whoa, right there, stop. After their failed attempt, John at least has access to remove the final safety chain. You be careful. When the water gets him pinned against the rock and he can't get out, he'll drown fast. OK, go ahead, lift. Can you swing it towards the trailer? These trailers are built as a unit. They're only made out of tin and wood. The trailer was so compromised, there's nothing to secure. So it just tore apart. The campers are out. But now Jamie's crew has to tackle the heavy part of the recovery with less than two hours of daylight. Working in the dark in a river, not going to happen. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't expect them to do it. Not safe. John wants to separate the tractor from the trailer and haul them up one at a time. On a truck and a trailer unit, you've got a fifth wheel plate and a kingpin on the trailer. And what it does is when you back the truck up underneath the trailer, the kingpin hooks into the fifth wheel and it latches, it locks in place. It won't release unless the tractor is leveled with the trailer. John rigs to the tractor so Phil can lift with HR 116 while the crane lifts the back end. I'll well, get around the axle, but I can get around the frame. Let's do that. We got a couple hours of sunlight, and then we're in the dark. 220 kilometers south on the logging road. Come on, baby. Jordy DePerrin from Mission Towing. Physics are right, it should flip has just one chance to flip the pickup into position so it lines up with the pathway between the tree stumps. There we go. The truck lands on its wheels. Inside my head, I'm just like, yes! That truck was in the perfect spot for the second stage of that recovery. But Jordy still has to get the wreck through a minefield of brush. So my thing right now, we're walking it over the tree. It's two lines, it's kind of walking over top of it, letting it roll over like he was driving over it. There's a path about seven feet between these two stumps. I needed to come over top of this and ride through it. They used two lines, and I walked it. So the truck's moving a little at a time. It's like grabbing with their hands and climbing, same kind of an idea to bring it up. The worst part of the recovery is I can't see the pickup truck from where the tow truck is parked. I'm relying on McLean, who is not a tower. Just watch it. I'm gonna lift. Should come over that log. Yeah. Let me know. Right it went right through the log? Yeah. Perfect. We never said it was going to come out pretty. Yeah. After rolling his truck in last week's snowstorm, the pickup's owner sees the damage up close. That's my baby, and it doesn't look like it's doing well right now. 
Wow. You guys are amazing. <laughs> yeah. You're alive, you know, I, uh, that's the main thing. Yeah. What wow. comes to mind right now? What do you like what do you think when you look at this after seeing it on spiels on the road? Oops. Right. I can't believe the brunt that cab took. And the fact you're still standing here talking to us about it, that's the other crazy part. I'm very, very fortunate. He's very lucky that uh, the situation worked out as it did. So well done, McLean. Not bad for a rookie. Yeah, not bad for my first time. Back on Highway 99, John's rigging up the tractor to HR 116 so he and Phil can try to separate it from the trailer. So that we can just pull the trailer out and then tackle the truck by itself. The crane will raise the back end while Phil lifts the tractor. We're running out of daylight. Hopefully this goes a little bit quicker than those trailers did. Phil, pull backward. You need to go up. To release the kingpin, they need to lift and even out the angle to reduce the gap between the tractor and trailer. We're going. Okay, you're clear of the post. They've leveled it out as much as they can. But as John tries to release the fifth wheel plate... It's just too much torque or pressure, either the trailer's twisted in such an angle, the truck's twisted in such a way, it's just not gonna release for us. John re-rigs for a better angle on the lift, and they try it again. Get out of there, just pull it up a bit and see what happens. Pull it up a bit. I'm clear, yeah. Watch yourself, bud. On Highway 99, two hours north of Hope, BC. I guess you have no idea how long it's going to be closed. Eh? New lead driver John is running out of daylight. He needs to separate the dangling trailer and tractor. So far, the kingpin is holding firm. The biggest part of the whole recovery that's heating at me was getting the truck out of the water. It had been in there already for a day and a half. We're trying to take the pressure off the kingpin. Pull it up a bit and see what happens. If they can even out the angle of the wreck, the kingpin should release. This unit's not stable. Even though nobody's touching anything at the time, the trailer itself can move or shift on you just because you've manipulated a little bit of weight off of it. I didn't touch nothing. Pull it up a bit. Nothing's happening. Still got too much gap. There's too much downforce angle on the trailer towards the truck. So it's not going to come free. There's nothing more we can do with that. Let's get the crane on and see what we can do with the crane. That's all we can do now, I guess. They'll have to lift the tractor and trailer onto the road together. and we're gonna move the crane closer to the bridge. HR-116 and the crane have to switch places for the crane to lift the cab. Go where he wants to be. That puts the crane in a position where he can get hooked onto the tractor and lift the tractor out of the water. And as he's bringing the tractor up, 116 is gonna pull the trailer back. We have to lift and pull. We can't just lift because of the rocks. Plus the retaining wall that we have to get up and over too. 
Sunset is now less than an hour away. You're faster than I am, Ralph. Keep going. Oh! The box is caught on that post. With it being up against the pylons, it created more of a problem for us. We're gonna have to move. HR 116 has to reposition to get the trailer away from the post. You just gotta do stuff to make motion forward, right? Something ain't working, just change the plan. We'll just have to keep positioning ourselves every once in a while. Okay, lift up. He's got the weight now, so we'll be able to lift it right up and out of the ditch. I'm standing by the crane, I'm hearing the alarms. If the crane surpasses its capacity, an alarm will sound and the crane will shut down, or much worse. This operator narrowly escapes with his life. I'm a little concerned, are we at capacity ready to keep going? I'm looking up to him. Are we good? Can we keep going? Keep going. On Highway 99, heavy rescue plans to lift a tractor trailer out of the river. I'm hearing the alarms. I'm looking up to him. Are we good? Can we keep going? It's just too heavy. I'm trying to get it closer, and I can't. The truck is too heavy for the crane to lift up the bank safely. Just get lined up so that you can get it so that it'll come right out this way. That might just give us enough. If the wrecker can pull the wreck in closer to the edge, the crane operator can retract his boom, increasing his lifting power. Snug your line up there a bit, and then I'll lift. With daylight fading, it's the last chance to get the truck out before dark. I originally told the crew that we'd be out of there by 3.30. It's hit 3.30, and we're still got more to get out. Clear the no post. We're almost all the way out. One more pull and she'll be out of here. The wreck is on the road and level. Oh, there we go. Finally, John is able to release the kingpin. Well, that's a long time coming. Our concern right now is it's getting dark. It's starting to get cold again, so it's going to ice up. We need to get the rest of this stuff out of here, get this road opened up for everybody else. John and Phil work to move the wreckage so travelers can finally get moving. We knew it was closed. We thought it might open at four, but now they say it's gonna open at eight o'clock this evening. Well, there's always pressure to open the road. But this is a situation here where you can't even let traffic by. They still have to load the campers but Jamie's crew decides to open a lane. We're gonna let the traffic that's here go, because we got a lady here that's got a baby. Okay. I'll just pull up this side, and they can scoot around this way. Yep. We're gonna get you moving. And we're gonna get you guys going. OK? The crane's moved. We're gonna let traffic go. And then I can get into position, and he can load us. After more than 27 hours, traffic is finally moving on Highway 99. While John oversees final cleanup. John's working his way up the respect meter with me. 
Jamie's got his confidence in me, so I'm very happy for that. He's proven himself out there in the field. You know, you can't argue that. Have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, good job. Good job. It was Got a pleasure done. meeting you. <laughs> we don't have to spend the night. No. We're out of here. We're going to head home. It's exhilarating. We got the job done. We got the road reopened. The vehicles are loaded on the respective units. The trucks are ready to pull out. And everybody's going to be home for Christmas. It's perfect. Next time on Highway Through Hell, a truck deep in a ditch ready to go. brings Jamie back to the road. A mangled grocery trailer means a massive cleanup Whoa. and a massive headache. You're pulling too hard. Alan Gord race against rush hour. Hey! Slow down! With an 80,000 pound load overpowering their records. Come on! Go! Stop! grocery trailer means a massive cleanup Whoa. and a massive headache. You're pulling too hard. Alan Gord race against rush hour. Hey! Slow down! With an 80,000 pound load overpowering their records. Come on! Go! Stop! On the highway through hell. The last line of defense is a heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster because closure is not an option. Pour of freezing rain has covered Highway 881 in thick ice. The coming, Gord? Yeah. Jobs are piling up for Jamie Davis Heavy Rescue. But lead driver Colin McLean. Four feet! Decided that a stranded plow truck was top priority. Two feet! Two feet. A little bit more. Okay, whoa! Good, good. You want him out there sounding insulting? So there are no more accidents. All right, you guys be safe. Okay? All right, you too, man. Conditions getting worse. Now oh, there's all kinds of calamities going on down there. Well, we got one down, possibly three or four more to go. Tonight's a really bad night. Now we got to go check on a bus accident uh, that the RCMP members have been waiting for us. Yes, it's probably going to be a busy night for everyone there, eh, Gord Butt? Colin heads south of Lac La Biche, down Highway 36, where his flagging crew was already on scene. Oh, it's it was sort of half on the road, half in the ditch, so it was kind of a hazard. Okay, let's go take a look. A semi sideswiped the bus while trying to pass in the freezing rain. Now, one lane of traffic is blocked. A lot of the oil companies have gone to busing their employees in. So we've got a lot of bus traffic now heading on these highways every day. And no more traffic northbound, please. Let's grab that ass in. With multiple jobs waiting, Colin can't afford any delays. 
But when Colin goes to angle the wheel lift on the rotator... What? Why is that not going out? Try that again. <laughs> Sounds like you got a hydraulic leak. What? Sounds like a leak. Controls, everything. Uh, blue hydraulic hose on the rotator. Me. Got pinched on something, caught on something. You gotta be kidding me. Colin had to improvise. Okay, grab the green winch line. And suck her back in. Oh, yeah. So I wanna turn it so I can just get in underneath of that underlift. He's trying to get it to the correct angle just so we can get it underneath the bus. He had to hook a chain up to the wheel lift, suck it back so we can get it to the right angle. Yeah. We look good. If something goes wrong with your truck, you gotta know how to hook up that vehicle. You're always on the fly, you're always on the go. Here's some tilt. There's there this. you be, buds. Gordon, you want to put a chain on that? Yeah. Please, put it right here. Colin's already been on the road for nine hours, and there's no end in sight. You have to be a warrior to be a wrecker operator to do this kind of job. Let's get out of this highway and get it open. They'll work eight, ten hours nonstop, continuous. So think of it as a marathon, and you're running a marathon. Hard. I just want to win enough money I don't have to work this hard. 1,200 kilometers southwest in B.C. It looks like he's right in the middle here, right in the middle of the meridian. It must have plowed right into it somehow. I don't know what the f he was thinking. Just west of the town of Hope, a semi is down and blocking the fast lane of the Trans-Canada Highway. Beauty. A big job for Big Al from Choir and Towing. The trailer was broken, and it had 80-some uh, thousand pounds of uh, paper and very heavy bales. The semi was traveling westbound in the fast lane when it lost control, careened into the center guardrail, and slammed down on its side. The timing couldn't be worse. Thousands of commuters will flood this main artery to Vancouver in just over two hours. The highways department want us to have this road open before 5.30 in the morning. This is like a high stress job. Because we don't have any room here to work, we got all this railing. Within minutes, Al's right-hand man, Gord Boyd, joins him at the scene. I pulled up and went, oh boy, this one's going to be fun. Oh, boy, he didn't do that truck any favors at all. It's full of paper. The loaded trailer is too heavy to flip without spilling the cargo. But there's no time to unload 80,000 pounds. It was an optimum air cushion job. Airbags could slowly raise the trailer intact, but there's a risk. Using the air cushions, there's still a chance that you could get it partially up and the trailer totally blow in half. And now you've only got 15 minutes left. Our only option is uh, get this thing up and we'll get Daryl's trailer underneath it, roll it on, take her home. Okay. To save time and avoid closing another lane, Alan Gord will leave the trailer on its side and winch it straight up onto a low bay. But it's still a gamble. Dragging and lifting the trailer could compromise the wall under the weight of the cargo. Bales of paper. And the walls of the trailer are not designed to take that kind of a load. I separated the tractor from the rest of the trailer because it's just twisted up too bad. There you go. You're good. good. We're good. We'll try and pick it up and shoot it out onto the road a little bit more. OK. You back up kind of just straight on, I think. Yeah, we'll just pendulum it out a little bit. Yeah. OK. Hit your lock. Hit your lock. 
Fuck! Gord needs to swing the trailer away from the median so the low bed can get underneath. As I lift up on the cable, that cable wants to go to vertical. Anything attached to it's going to come with it. It has to. It's one of Newton's laws. Easy, easy, easy. Listen to the trailer. Yes, I was listening. The sound of popping rivets will signal that the trailer is starting to rupture under the strain. That trailer could have easily exploded. There's not much hold those trailers together once they're damaged. They kind of blow apart like a tin can. Let's go up a little more, Gord. A little more? Yeah. Up. But as they raise it up... Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, it's starting to buckle. The 80,000-pound load is already straining the roof and walls. You can see, you see it's a ripple on the roof of the trailer. Just before 4 a.m., the low bed arrives. One with a very special feature. The axle slide ahead, allows the back of the trailer to drop down, and uh, makes a nice even ramp where you can uh, load equipment, or in this case, the semi-trailer laying on its side. Good. I'm hoping we can just get this thing on there and off with it. Really? You're going to haul it on sideways? Yeah, well, we're Oh, yeah. We're getting close to 5.30. The low bed's winch will pull the loaded trailer onto the deck. Good. Yeah. OK, wind her up. As the trailer moves up, the heavy cargo is pushing down on the side. The sharp edge of the ramp slides forward against the trailer's bulging wall. Yeah. OK, wind her up. Al and Gord of Quiring Towing need to get a trailer off BC's Highway 1 before the morning rush. It's going up perfect. Not too sharp, not too much lift. With less than an hour and a half to go, Al's gambling, dragging the badly damaged trailer and its 80,000 pound load onto a low bed. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, the recovery has hit a snag. That pale edge of the trailer is so sharp that it started actually cutting into the side of the trailer. Cross these timbers under here, Lord. Yep. Al comes up with a quick damage control plan. Slide your wheels back again. Adjusting the angle of the deck of the low bed so he can place scrap wood underneath for extra support. Okay. We're just gonna change the angle a little bit, get the deck more on the ground so it just scoops underneath and picks everything up. Can we go up more? Should we go up a little more? Okay, okay, push her down. We can use the deck to lift the whole load up. We can get a brace under it. Now he can get back under without hooking the side of the trailer. The side of the trailer is compromised right now. He's not going to take a whole lot of stress. Oh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good, but it's working so far. You're worrying about the cargo. You're worrying about cargo escaping and becoming a bigger task. This is going to be the worst part right here, because this is pretty much the middle of the trailer, so we have the most flex. Holy and there's another problem. It's not working. His angle's getting worse and worse. Yeah. The trailer is sliding on crooked. OK, Gord, we're going to need to get you to come up here. I'll let the uh, traffic girl know. Yes. They need Gord's 50-ton record to pull it straight. Stop driving! And they'll need to shut down the other lane. Pull, Gord! Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
there is stress. There's obviously the uh, the ministry, the government wants to know why their highways closed and what's taking so long. And sometimes that's very challenging and stressful too. Now the weight of the load is stressing Gord's truck. I got wheels off the ground. Water. No. No. Stop. Eighty kilometers to the east on BC's Highway Three. Five minutes away now. We're getting really close. Jamie Davis is leading his first big recovery of the season. John's got a few days off right now, so it's pretty much up to me to lead this recovery job. Last week, Jamie's new lead driver in BC, John, pulled off one of the toughest jobs of the season so far. John, be careful. So while John takes some downtime, Jamie's heading out in his newest record, the triple axle HR117. I love getting in a brand new truck, nice piece of equipment, and get out there and make the thing dance. 117 is a 50 ton machine. It has quite a few bells and whistles on it. It's got the three stage boom, it's a hauler, and it's a recovery truck. The truck is heading to Alberta next week, but tonight it's teaming up with Jamie's new tandem wrecker. 160. That was the first wreck these two big trucks had been on, and first time I operated either one of them. Jamie's stepping out from behind his desk to help a longtime client. Their loaded semi slid off the road and flipped down a steep embankment. It was sitting on trees, and the trees had punctured through a little bit of one or two panels. The customer wants the truck and the medical supplies inside out of the ditch tonight. We want to bring it up intact, you know, with the load inside, save the customer unloading, and that's our goal. So keep him happy. So you're going to run a line down. Out of my truck. Through a block. Over to the axle. Over to the center. You're going to put chain in, in both wheels, like a half inch chain. On both wheels? Yep. And this recovery up. is a chance for Jamie to see firsthand how his BC crew is performing. Phil and Wayne are both junior guys. They've been around big trucks, they understand towing, but when it comes to recovery, they're both a little inexperienced on that. Are you chained up the axles? Not yet. You can do that, you don't need to wait for him. Really want to watch these guys, and I'm gonna make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Just kind of wrap it around both. Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down in the Fraser Valley on Highway 1. Pull, pull. Al and Gord are trying to line up the wrecked trailer on the low bed. No! No! Stop! But the weight of the load is overwhelming even Gord's 50 ton record. Good. Okay. Cast it off, pick the leg up, back off the road. Yep. Okay, back up. Back up. Gord needs to move his truck. Come on, hurry up. We're in the fast lane. We got the roadblock to get a more direct angle on the pole. Crank it! It is crank! Oh! OK, start tightening. Yep. OK, let's try it again. Pull, guard! Pull, pull. Gord quickly clears out, letting the backed up traffic through. Some of these eastbound guys aren't slowing down for us. Hey, you want to slow the hell down? But after a 20 minute delay, some truckers try to make up for lost time. It's dangerous enough as it is. It really is. The last thing I need is a highway truck going by me three feet away at highway speed. <laughs> hey! Gord's getting pissed off at these uh, apparent professional drivers. Slow down! It's very dangerous up there. 
That means you, Paula. Hey, next time you come to an accident scene, the law says slow down. One wrong move, and that goes from a bad situation to a very bad situation. It's less than an hour until the RCMP wants them off the road. Okay. Gord and Al finally get the trailer positioned on the low bed, but it's not a perfect fit. We had about 10 feet hanging off the end. The front end of the trailer was already damaged in the crash. Now, the weight of the load is pushing against the overhanging wall. We'll get up on top with another cargo chain, and we'll wrap this. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Underneath. Until they can wrap it with chains for reinforcement, the wall could rip open at any second. I'm just worried about that falling out in the back. Very heavy, and right now this piece wants to let go. With a morning rush approaching fast, <laughs> Alan Gord of Quiring Towing have hit a hurdle on Highway 1 in BC. Okay, well, let's, let's react to it. There's actually a whole section of trailer just dropped right on the ground. Yeah, I was afraid of that happening. As soon as we picked it off the ground, gravity took over. Pulling the trailer on its side was a risk, one they took to save time. But now, the morning surge of traffic is just 45 minutes away. Buddy's tractor is pretty messed up there. He must have hit that rail pretty hard. Come 5.30, and it's almost like clockwork. It's the rush. Everybody going into town. Problem is, the load's dragging on the ground. We got to do something about that. They'll use a chain from Gord's bumper to haul out the bales of paper. pounds each. Oh, it took a little bit of work to get those bundles, uh, you know, because they're all jammed in. So it's kind of like that game pickup sticks where you, you, know, you want to try and get the one that's least jammed. You can't put a hook in the paper. Your only option is to grab the wire bailing hole and get together. It's just not designed for that. You're OK. Keep going. Bounce it. It's gonna come. They'll have to unload the loose bundles by hand. Okay. All right, Daryl, if you want to drop her on the ground, we'll see if we can chain this bitch up. The low bed driver can finally move the trailer off the highway. That one's pretty much toast. But the tractor is going to be a whole new problem. That is not towable. Up on Highway 3. Uh, Jamie Davis Tundra, a couple of uh, big wreckers. Are you chained up the axles? Not yet. You can do that. You don't need to wait for him. Jamie's regular customer wants their rig recovered with its load of medical supplies inside tonight. For one to go. But the tractor is so damaged. Bit of work. The front end was kind of smashed up quite a bit, and there was no tow pins. Jamie's having trouble finding any secure rigging points. I'm getting onto something that really isn't as strong as it should be, but there's really nothing else to do. Two lines from 117 are rigged to the axles of the tractor, while 116 is hooked to the trailer's axles. They'll pull the semi over and up the slope. Can you stay at the back end and watch the wall underneath? If the wall's breaching anywhere, let me know. Yep, you'll get this if it is. Yeah, OK. A rupture in the wall will add hours of cleanup time. Things don't always go according to plan either, so you never know what's going to happen. Ready? Yeah. 
of the load is still pushing against the wall. Ooh, be careful there. You listen to all kinds of things. You can hear the winch line, you can hear the truck, you can hear the load, different sounds that alert you to things that could be going wrong. There's one sound Jamie doesn't want to hear. That banging in there? Well, that's the same kind of sound that happens when the trailer breaks in half. So what was the banging? On BC's Highway 3, Jamie's under pressure to recover a semi and its load of medical supplies. Oh, uh, hold on. You hear that banging in there? But a telltale sound puts the pull on hold. So what was the banging? We heard a banging. You know, that's the same kind of sound that happens when a trailer breaks in half. The wreck is actually talking to you. It's, it's telling you things, you know, by what you hear. Back at the back, the outer skin's broken a little bit, but it, the rest of the wall's fine. OK. So let's, let's hold you up for a bit, OK? OK? All kinds of things and all kinds of sounds around that are, are telling you things. So listening is a big, important part of what you're doing. It's probably time for us to re-rig this thing and do a little bit of a higher pull on this. Uh-huh. So I'm going to bring everything. I'm going to loosen everything off on this truck, and I'm going to give it one little pull out, too, and get some room to bring this up into here. All right. He's just going to pull ahead so we've got room. I'm just going to move her. We're just repositioning the truck. They'll take up both westbound lanes to maneuver the wreck onto the road. Well, we're, we're trying to minimize our impact on traffic, really. But there are points in times where, you know what? We have no choice. We have to block the highway. And we had to get her done, and that's just what had to happen. We'll let Phil do some winching here. You ready to go? Phil and Wayne, if you don't have these two working together in concert, you can split the trailer in half. Tonight, the client supplies are back on the road, and Jamie's BC backup crew has passed the boss's test. One piece at a time, eh? We need good guys that are going to run these trucks and do a good job. Okay, so let's get this unhooked and get off the highway. Good equipment, good guys, good service. kilometers east in the Fraser Valley. So you're going to need two lines? Yep. Al Quiring still trying to clear the tractor from Highway 1. Time is a, a factor. you got to be off the road before 5.30. The RCMP and highways officials need the road clear by 5.30 when morning traffic heads for Vancouver. You've got all the morning freight hauls that are going in for their 7 o'clock deliveries. Those guys are all coming in. But there's no way to tow the tractor. The tractor was twisted a full 90 degrees along its length. They'll need both wreckers to lift it off the road. We'll just come in, slingshot it, pick it up, back a trailer under it, set it down. Well, the frame's always the best spot. It's usually the strongest. Just like that. With
with a 20,000 pound tractor hanging in midair. As soon as we get rid of them, I want to shut the road off again for, for five or 10 minutes. Al needs room for the low bed to move in. Hey there, Gord, you can uh, push me back and I'm just gonna crank my wheels hard over. With Gord backing up and me turning, it just it created enough of a space there that the low bed was able to back underneath. Hey, watch your toes, he's backing in. Much yet. Yeah, rush hour is about to start. We're going to get off of here just in the nick of time. Yeah? I guess we can call that mission accomplished. I should be that bad. Yeah? Wasn't pretty, but we got her done. Morning in Lac La Biche, Alberta. Colin still recovering from a busy night, but there's more work to do, and this time, it's not a recovery. You know, taking care of everything is a you know different role than I had last year. Colin's kind of become the senior driver around there now. And you know, if it means that he's got to go get toilet paper, he goes and gets toilet paper. New shop, new problems. We'll deal with them. That's what we do. We're out of water at the shop, so. With no water main to the shop, water is usually delivered to fill the holding tank. Everybody up here has to buy their own water. But Colin can save Jamie money if he picks up the water himself. Now to see if there's no fire. Jamie's fire truck has a perfect size tank. Oh, listen to that old 460 fur bike. <laughs> The problem is, it's not insured. So it needs to be towed everywhere we take it. So just hook it up to the tow truck, tow it down to the fill station. It is a weird way to get water. But it's a water tank. It's got a big lid on the top of it to put the fill hose in, and it's got a pump to pump it out. Jamie Davis, three quarters of a million dollar water delivery service. <laughs> Getting her done in Alberta. Yeah, we have ourselves water. It's a dollar for 200 gallons of water. Now we take back the beer cans for the water. Ah. Water in the holding cell by. It's just one more responsibility for the new senior driver in Lac La Biche. Like I'm stepping in, filling in the void. Somebody's got to do it and get it done. Water flowing. Water flowing. Where it's supposed to be flowing from. Back in BC. There's no shortage of water. Rain has been pounding Highway 1 west of Hope since midnight. Going westbound, it's just wet. At 11 a.m., slick roads claim a victim. Wanna check out the front of it? We got A semi loaded with groceries has plowed into the hillside. The RCMP have just phoned us uh, for a, a major accident involving a tractor trailer. Jordy DePerrin answers the call. Jordy runs Mission Towing a company his great-grandfather started over 60 years ago. I've grown up in tow trucks. I used to ride with my grandfather uh, as a kid. I needed a pillow to see over the dashboard. But today, Jordy's the one in charge. It's on its side in the ditch. The trailer is completely tore open by the trees. Apparently, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess everywhere. 
the police want this cleared off as quick as possible just to get the highway flowing back to normal again. The trailer can just park on that road. He'll, he'll be pointing this way. Salvage expert Jim Lasser and his crew are already on scene. The trailer is too broke up to recover the load on it, so we're going to take the load off first. When we got there, we knew it was going to be a very big job. The axles in the truck and trailer were uh, twisted out. It's into the bank really hard. This wasn't going to be an easy job to do. It's a two-record job, so Jordy's called in two operators. Everybody's stacking and packing and loading up. With the cargo unloaded, Jordy and crew can get to work. Let's start up here first. They rig one wrecker to the back of the trailer and the other to the axles of the tractor. The problem with that tractor trailer is the axles were all twisted, the fronts, the rear. Everything had such a twist to it that uh, it wasn't an easy job to hook up to get it out of the ditch. With this much damage, Jordy's crew must be exact with their pull. The trailer is like a giant eggshell. Can't over pull the trailer. Both operators have to work together to delicately bring it out. Okay. If the trailer breaks into more than one piece or breaks in half, the highway is going to be closed a lot longer. Whoa! They're pulling too hard. In Lac La Biche, Alberta. Jamie's lead driver, Colin McLean, She'll be icy. has another job to tackle up Highway 881. Kind of in uh, the big bay corner here in Lac Bish. The hot spot for uh, vehicles going off the road there. A little tricky area to be doing a recovery. The tanker jackknifed on the icy bend spun around 180 degrees, slamming into the ditch. Gord Lundin is away, so Colin has to work without a swamper, right in the middle of two blind corners. You just can't see the other side, right? So you have to sort of watch both ways, always. So yes, very dangerous. We actually got a fair bit of traffic on it, but we're keeping at least one lane open, alternating. It's a very narrow highway. You have traffic going at high speeds. It can be really dangerous if you don't have traffic control. Collins' two flaggers will each guard one end of the curve because it's the worst day of the week to be working on the road. The oil patch shift change will add to the already heavy flow of vehicles. The most efficient way to pull the truck is to winch it straight ahead by rigging to the tow pin on the bumper. Highway 1. Yeah, it looks like a war zone. The trailer was laying on the side when I went past. They had a little bit of a mess there, eh? I'm gonna watch it go. Jordy and his crew from Mission Towing fight to haul the grocery trailer back to the road. Okay. But the wreck is barely holding together. The worst case scenario is that trailer just breaks in half. You're pulling too hard. Okay, hold it there. And what we did is we basically brought it out of the ditch from the rear, with the heavy end still in the ditch. Beautiful. Now, they need to lift out the remains of the tractor, trying to keep it in one piece. Good. 
because the front end was so hit very hard and uh, the axle was twisted out of it, the engine, the motor mounts had broke on the tractor, the tranny mounts had broke on the tractor, so everything was hanging low. The crew wraps the motor mount to the axle with chains, hoping the front end will hold. much damage, Jordy will have to tow the tractor and trailer separately. Beautiful. Right there. Yeah. Up. Just hold it there. We're just trying to get the axle straightened out enough so that they'll, they'll tow straight and just trying to free up any bent metal that's, that's rubbing on the wheels so it's towable. Compromise. Just put some pallets in there and take some of the bounce on the trailer. Put some structural integrity back in the trailer for transport. Let's try here. I can go in the side there. I can go there. All right, boys. After a four-hour battle, both lanes are open on Highway 1. It's a really good feeling. It's a great feeling. We can look at the highways department and open the road again. Pretty good. Yeah. Traffic is flying around the blind corner north of Lac La Biche. Collins working without a swamper, and his plan A uh, yeah. has fallen apart. What? The bumper is pulling away from the frame. There was a little bit of damage from when it went in, so. It's kind of weakened up really good. Uh, I think it was that side there that actually finally let go. So I'm just gonna go right to the front axle and uh, yard this thing up from there. Yeah, I am gonna need uh, just to shut down for not very long. Shutting down 881 during shift change will back up traffic instantly. Last vehicle is a black uh, or. With thousands of workers on the road. I don't like to have the highway shut down for anything longer than 10 minutes. Colin can't afford any more delays. Oh, what's going on here? It's closed in both directions. You need to get home. Got things to do tomorrow. Why did this have to happen today? Is this highway open yet? It's closed both ways. On a blind corner north of Lac La Biche, all traffic is stopped on Alberta's Highway 881. You're not alone, man. We're frustrated. On the day that shift change in the oil patch has put thousands of workers on the road. Collins counting on a quick recovery of the smash tanker, as long as the front end of the tractor holds together. The tractor's wheels make it to the road, but the trailer won't fall. As I'm driving ahead, the trailer will just stay in the ditch. So we don't want that to happen either. Okay, we're sending. The flaggers release the growing backlog. And Colin repositions the rotator so he can finish the job keeping one lane open. You gotta think you're, what's more important, getting this thing out half an hour quicker or keeping the traffic flowing. Just go swing around, come back, come and grab the back end of the trailer and just kind of pull the trailer up. Swinging out the rotator's boom, Colin is able to finish the job without moving into the second lane. The way you position your truck, you know, for leverage on pulling on stuff, for recovering things, differs a lot with the rotator. Because the rotator, you can put the boom 360 degrees wherever you want it. Running a rotator with a revolving boom 
brings a whole new challenge to what he's doing. There's a whole lot of different things that come into play. Lifting straps, you know, chain rigging, mathematics and physics that, that come into this game. up on solid ground now. Uh, it's good to go. It's just pretty much a matter of me hooking up to the front end right now. Which is all good. As long as the customer's happy and you know all the equipment's still in check. So, yeah, can't complain. We're good to go. Uh, that'll do. You always want to bring your best game to the wreck. Get in the ring and, and you're going to fight that wreck as hard as you can. Decent, Jimmy. All right, Ange, we're just pulling out here now. Cool feeling when you get all done. There's nothing else like it. And we are a go. I give him kind of extra bonus because he's stuck it out and he's been there on the hard days and hard nights. And he works his ass off. It's just me. It's my nature. Things got to get done. Let's get them done. Next time on Highway Through Hell. That's huge pressure to handle that wreck. A head-on wreck. Well, that's something else. Shuts the Trans Canada and threatens the railway below. Ken Monkhouse faces an icy recovery. There you go, go. On a remote mountain road. Stop! Stop! And ice storm devastation. Oh. Oh. Strikes. Look at that thing come down. In Heavy Rescue's backyard. Everybody get away. to handle that wreck. A head-on wreck. That's something else. Shuts the Trans Canada and threatens the railway below. Ken Monkhouse faces an icy recovery. There you go, go. On a remote mountain road. Stop! Stop! And ice storm devastation. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Look at that thing come down. In Heavy Rescue's backyard. Everybody get away. On the highway through hell. The last line of defense is a heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because closure is not an option. Freezing rain pounded BC's Cascade Mountains. Never a dull moment on this highway. Covering the entire area around Hope in a blanket of ice. Very slippery up there in places. It's all freezing rain up there. It can be one of the most dangerous things going. Trees and power lines strain under the weight. They were saying this is the worst one since 1964. Until finally, they give way. The power's out at the Chevron as well as uh, Lang J, guys. Couldn't make it to a count of 10 without hearing a tree going over. You're talking about bringing big trees down, power lines coming down, flash freezing on the highway. The ice is building up and it's only gonna get worse tonight. Uh, 
I can't believe that truck. Look at it. Look at the ice on that thing. Yeah, it's not sound good. Just after dark, the rain starts hammering down once again. At 8.40 p.m., Good evening, Jamie Davis. The first call comes in. John, Jamie's lead driver in Hope, responds in HR 116. A semi truck hit a tree on Highway 1. We got trees falling, cracking and breaking with the ice on them. John heads 20 minutes west on Highway 1, dodging fallen trees on the icy highway. Oh, there we go. There's the tree that hit. The semi was on a narrow tree-lined stretch of the Trans-Canada when a branch fell right in its path, shattering the windshield. Going to a situation in the conditions that we're going to, we're all in fear of what might happen. Oh, there's another one. I don't want to hit that. But I'd have to fight the fear to get the job done to make sure everybody else is safe. hear the trees cracking and breaking on either side of you. There's a couple of trees right here. You look how they're bending. They're bending right over top of the road. My instinct's telling me to get out. Watch the trees, people. But there's people that are in trouble. We need to be here. We need to help them. Just go slow, one. Keep your, uh, keep your window open so you can hear if there's anything cracking. Watch out. So. I'm John, I'm with Jamie Davis. Are you okay? The trucker can't safely drive his rig with a broken windshield. With more trees falling, he and John's crew are sitting ducks. We're just gonna pick it up, and we're just gonna go. Get you off the highway, get you out of here. Okay, up and arrow board's on. But just as John's flagger gets into position, how dangerous it is out here. And a tree had come down and clipped the front of our tundra. Thank God nobody was standing there when that happened. We need to get everybody out of here and we need to get them out of here now. It's not a safe place. None of it is, no. There's no time for John to rig up to the semi. The RCMP orders everyone out of the danger zone. So we're just gonna move them up out of the trees and uh, then we'll hook them up from the other side and get moving. So let's go. Okay. Let's go. We got it roll. John takes the lead, guiding the driver up the road away from the overhanging branches. You don't know what's coming down. It's very scary. A few kilometers west, John reaches a stretch where the trees are farther back from the highway. Now that it's safe, he can hook up for the tow. My job is to serve the public. If somebody needs me, I'm gonna get there. And I'm gonna help them. So far, so good. Definitely service before self. kilometers to the southeast. I don't like this spot at all, actually. The ice has stranded another vehicle. It wouldn't go any further, so then we were kind of readjusting and then put it in park and all of a sudden the truck just slid. The two young men got stuck on a remote back road, sliding sideways toward the river. The road slanted, right? So the ice just did the rest. They tied their pickup to a tree to keep it from going over the 30-foot drop into the water. As so scared that I'm gonna go down into the river. That little tree saved it. Heavy Rescue's Wayne Sahada is heading to scout the location. 
I'd never seen anything like that. There was carnage everywhere. Just carnage left over from Mother Nature. With the 10 kilometer stretch of road clogged with fallen trees, Wayne didn't think his flatbed could make it. I went up there with my uh, little minivan just to have a look. Is that doing sandbags back? Yeah, one on the other side, but yeah, just two. Yeah, any more in the back? Nope. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this guy's pickup, but if that little rope they've got breaks, that truck is sliding in. It was bad. It's ice, solid ice. I'll get the other truck up here, the small one, because mine won't make it up here. Yeah. It's too many trees, broken trees. The only truck that we had that could do that would have been our little one-ton tow truck. My turn to go and play. Wayne calls in Ray Potter, who drives for Jamie part-time. All right, let's figure out a way how to turn around and get out of here. Wayne plans to meet Ray halfway down the road. Hop in, let's go. Let's go hopefully not kill ourselves. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't even want to get in now. Like They were scared. Neither one of them wanted to be anywhere near my van when I attempted to turn it around. I just don't want to go through that again. It was scary, and I don't want to go through the end. But when Wayne tries to turn around... Whoa! Oh, God. My van started to slide towards the ditch. I was like, whoa! Now I'm worried about getting my van out because it's trying to slide towards the, the cliff. All right, ready? Hang on. Well, that was a little tricky. Got my van turned around and got back down. It's a slow drive to the rendezvous with Ray. But Ray's truck's small. Low to the ground. I'm sure he'll make it. This is solid ice you're driving on right now. Stay to your left if you can, because the road is on an angle and it'll just start sliding. Wayne guides Ray back to the pickup. There's a lot of treacherous cliffs up those back roads. You went wrong when you said it was an obstacle course. Stay to your left, Ray. You stop right there. Whoa. It's being held by a rope. And that sandbag. And that sandbag. We're going to try to slide the front end over, and hopefully it will not slide off the bank. <laughs> OK, they got a hook there. Whoa. Careful. <laughs> You're going to go flying. But if it did start to move, it's only going one way. Hopefully they can drive it out of here. Oh, OK. When the truck took off, it would pull race truck with it. Okay, pull slowly. Just real slow. Oh, hold it, Ray. She's flying back. Hopefully, they can drive it out of here. On a remote back road south of Hope, BC. Okay, pull slowly. Just real slow. Jamie's drivers, Ray and Wayne, are battling sheer ice to recover a pickup truck on the edge of a 30-foot drop. The weight of that pickup is enough to pull that tow truck with it, especially on ice. Oh! Hold it, Ray! She's sliding back. If the pickup slides too far, both trucks could go into the river. I think that rope's going to snap. Whoa. Okay, pull slowly. Keep pulling. Is this ever slippery? Yeah. Little more. Keep going. Okay, stop right there. They managed to get the front end back on the road. Unhook. Okay, they're disconnected. Want me to go up there and untie it? Yeah. You don't think it's just going to slide? Do you want me to do this? Take it off. Oh, 
There we go. Let's see if this works or. Drive it down now? Yeah. And I'll follow you down. <laughs> that actually went quite smooth, considering we're on sheer ice. <laughs> Job. Thank you for your assistance. The next morning. I look like a World War came through here, eh? Just leveled everything. Daylight reveals the full damage left by the storm. Stay in the fast lane, there's a bunch of debris in the school lane. And in Jamie's yard, cleanup is just beginning. The wind's coming, so that's even gonna make it worse. We're not over with this yet. Holy smokes. Well, the storm's really beating us up. And now it's moving through our place and through the rest of the province. Hey, how you doing, buddy? How about you? Are you in Edmonton or in Hope? Jamie gives a heads up to his buddy, Gary Leach. Gary, owner of United Towing, works 500 kilometers northeast on the Alberta border. I'm just looking at uh, the radar. Yeah. I think you're going to be in for a big storm coming up. Wow. OK, buddy. Let's talk to you. Bye. Bye. And Gary's already facing a tough recovery blocking Highway 1. There was some serious contact here between these two trucks. The wreck has shut down the main commercial route through the mountains for over 12 hours. A couple of rigs went head on. They're all bad, but this is exceptional. It's a nasty one. Can you get through that accident? Or they got the road closed. Highway 1 is closed. This is one of the worst commercial truck accidents our companies have ever dealt with. Pretty overwhelming to see the carnage and the wreckage. Neither driver Fatality up there they're dealing with. made it out alive. This incident is a very tragic event in that there's been a loss of life. Gary is all too aware of the dangers on the highway. He had a bad accident where a chain broke and, and the hook came back and, and got him right in the in the lower jaw. He almost died. But Gary fought back. And last year, he received the North American towing industry's highest honor. The Silver Star. Well, it's a huge honor to get the award that he got tonight. It hits me close to home because he's, you know, he's a friend of mine. His inner strengths brought him back to the industry again. I'm proud to be in a circle of guys like that. Now he's facing his biggest wreck since returning to work. I want this done. So I'm ready whenever then. Well, that's not a small little job. You're dealing with two tractor trailers, fatality accident, investigation. You've got a two lane highway that, uh, you know, needs to be open. Gary's number two is his lead driver and son, Colin. I applaud him for coming back. He loves towing too much to, to not do it. Colin and his crew are under the gun to clear out both wrecks before the storm hits. It's one of the major routes between east and west. That's huge pressure on Gary to, to handle that wreck. Rig it up, pull it up, and drag it up here. Everything will be highway back over. Yeah. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Colin's first priority is the wreck on the road with a fully loaded trailer. The wreckage is blocking the entire highway. I've never seen so many trucks stop. It is a huge amount of pressure to, to get the traffic flowing. I think we're going to have to use that one for the length, just to get it around the corner of the trailer. There's nothing on the front of the trailer to even hook to. The trailer is ruptured in the front, the roof, and the driver's side wall. There's cargo hanging out of it. What do we do with it all, though? It wasn't good. We sit here and pick up each piece, or do we open the highway? Unloading the trailer would take hours. 
Instead, Colin is gambling he can drag the trailer on its side to a nearby pullout. Hook onto the rear of the trailer, swing at 180 degrees, opening the eastbound lane, but also sweeping all the debris. That's the plan. I'm going to go pretty much right at the center line, and, and all the load is just going to go with it. Hopefully. Here we go. Watch it back. If the trailer ruptures further, Colin could spill the remaining load all over the highway. It may or may not work, but you've got to take the chance. Kilometers southwest. Eastbound scale two, two is closed. There's no power there. Hope is still reeling in the ice storm's aftermath. Oh, that's a lot of ice in there, eh? It's a mess. We're having a real infrastructure problem. At Jamie's yard, power and communications are cut off. Uh, I don't. The internet's down, so our branches can't connect to each other. Jamie's BC dispatch is paralyzed. There's not even words to describe how painful it is for me to have the phones down, to have the power out. Don't you reset these things? There should be a button, a round button that you press. Is there nothing on there? No reset? We're having a really day here. Unbelievable. Everything we do is done by computerized dispatch. It dispatches all our trucks, it does all our billing, it handles everything. We had a huge crisis on our hands. Holy unbelievable. The roof caved in on it. We're actually not in a good spot. Big, huge trees were tumbling down, you know, big trees. That one's ready to go, you see that? And I thought, okay, what's next? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Clear, right up there. Look. Up there. Look at this. Look at it come down, oh my god. Everybody get away! Clear, right up there. Look, look at this. Look at this. After two days of building ice. Oh, oh. Look at it come down, oh my god. The trees above Jamie's yard in Hope, BC. Look out! Are giving way. Oh my god, look at that thing come down. that have been on that mountain forever are now coming down and all you could do is just stand out in the in the in the yard and watch that had to be the scariest thing for me it's like which one's going to go next really the ice storm is playing havoc with jamie's business no phones no calls in no computer so i can dispatch calls out it's been a hell of a day for me i'll tell you that not one that I want to repeat very soon. Holy it's like a parking lot out here. Over 500 kilometers to the northeast. I can't believe how much traffic there is. Jamie's friend, Gary of United Towing, is facing his own struggle. Traffic is backing up for miles down Highway 1. 
It's the major commercial uh, route for east-west. There really is no other alternate route. And when that highway is closed, it's a very critical incident. Gary and son Colin are trying to move the mangled trailer the fastest way possible. That's something else. Crawling out of the box. I guess everything came out, eh? No, there's one half loaded still. There's still cargo in the trailer. They've got the trailer out of the eastbound lane. Now they must drag it to a pullout. Okay, I'm gonna drive ahead with it. And try not to leave a trail of cargo behind them. He's gonna take a risk to do that. He's gotta do it. If the trailer opens up or creates an even bigger mess, that's always gonna hold you up and tie up the road even longer. I'm gonna do my best to get it all there. I can't believe that all stayed in there. The crew has to clear the remaining debris before moving on to the second wreck down the slope. But with weather and darkness on the way... We have concerns about doing this kind of recovery in the dark. There's no time to start phase two of the job. Yeah, well, this, this is it. This can stay here. And we'll be back for the second truck. Visibility's down, it's dark out. It's not only a risk to their crew, it's also a risk to other motorists coming onto an accident scene in the middle of the night. For now, all lanes reopen to traffic. Highway's open. Yes, 10 part. One down, one to go. Mm -hmm. Next afternoon, a hundred kilometers west of Hope. This is why you always buy maximum insurance anytime you insure a vehicle, because stuff like this happens. Ken Monkhouse, now working for Mission Towing, is heading up a remote logging road to make a recovery that resulted from the ice storm. It was blowing and it was icier than heck. It was like an old, old school, old style storm we used to get when we were kids. It was crazy. The ice and the terrain are a tough combination. It's a forest service road, so you got lots of tall trees, you got lots of steep embankments. It was uh, cold, slippery, just not much fun, not a good place to be. Last season, and low, low and idle down. I'm doing. a job on a very similar road went bad for Tim. Ah! Get out of the ah! It took Ken months to get over that scare. Ken's new boss, Jordy, is relying on him to pull off this job smoothly. I usually go to uh, all back road recoveries myself. Unfortunately, this particular one, I couldn't make it. Usually in the backwoods here, it gets dark at about 3.30 this time of year. I don't want to be up here when it gets dark because it's, uh, it's a whole different animal. So we got we to gotta get up there and get her done. We got to have our A game happening today, or we could get into trouble real quick, real fast, and uh, it could be really, really bad. Unreal. Well, I told you it was a steep bank. Yeah. My brother was towing this trailer and uh, just dragged him down. Oh, the only thing that was holding him was these two trees here. The driver managed to get his pickup out, but the trailer is stuck. Oh, that's a crazy close call, eh? Anyway, he's lucky to walk away from it. So I'll put you, that, you'll go under there, Richie. Okay. I'll go under here. Ken's number two for this job is Richie Hawkins. Lucky those tr trees stopped them. Ken will rig a line from his truck straight to the front of the trailer. Richie will rig two lines from a side angle. 
Ken will pull the trailer up to the road while Richie's lines hold it upright. If we move that trailer in the wrong way, the trailer can go sideways, and we're all going to go down into the creek. It's just going to be freaking nasty. Right now, line up. Keep your line tight, Richie. I am providing the horizontal lift, whereas Richie is providing vertical stability. Take it up. to hold the trailer so that I can move my truck ahead and finish pulling it up onto the road. I've got it. You want to pull ahead more? Tip. I said, move your truck ahead. You know, you'll tighten the lines up, and then I can move ahead. But Richie can't get traction on the icy road. Turn your wheels a bit to the left and maybe back up a little bit. There you go. go. Stop. I've got it. You want to pull ahead more? Tip. On an icy mountain road west of Hope, B.C. Turn your wheels a bit to the left and maybe back up a little bit. Ken Monkhouse directs driver Richie to reposition his truck. There you go. Go. But after revving up and finally getting traction on the ice. Stop. Stop. Richie goes too far. Those completely come out. He's run out his winch lines. I thought I had more line left. I got to move in and I didn't want to stop. They both came out. We can't put those back on, can we? They're both. Now, Ken's down a truck. The truck he needed to secure the teetering camper while he repositioned. The second truck I so desperately need is now, you know, a six ton, you know, piece of Play Doh. And we're at the make or break point here, so. I only gotta move ahead five feet to get this thing up. This might as well be 500 miles because we've, we've got no way to restrain this trailer. Six hundred kilometers east, Colin Leach from United Towing is heading in his rotator to finish the job on Highway One. It's unlike any other wreck I've ever done before. His father Gary follows close behind. Last night's storm has buried the second wreck under deep snow, but the big problem is what's below the wreckage. This truck that we're going to be recovering is just on the left here. Uh, one of the concerns today is to ensure that none of the wreckage that slides down that embankment onto the uh, railroad tracks below. If the wreck breaks apart and tumbles down the slope during the recovery, it'll block the main track for east-west trade. You cause something or anything to stop that train, they say it's a million dollars an hour. We should speak with him. Yeah. A railway rep is on scene to monitor the recovery and control rail traffic. We're hoping nothing's going to slide down, but yeah, for sure. Um, we'll do everything we can to prevent that. There's anywhere from 12 to, on a busy day, 30 some trains a day. Stuff coming down onto the tracks is a big, big no-no. We're going to give it a slam, see what happens. The cab's off of it, the hood's gone, trailer's ripped off. There's nothing left. It's it's all shrapnel. You can't just hook onto it and tow it away. They'll start with the biggest piece, rigging to the axles of the trailer and trying to slide it up the slope. 
The crew shuts down both the highway and the railway. We have two different worlds breathing down our neck. Hey guys, uh, they're closed now. Sounds good. It was basically double the pressure. I hope everything will stay together here. Okay, can you guys see if you can get this back door closed? We try to close the doors to create more rigidity in it. It's not latching at all on this side. It won't do it, eh? Yeah, I can't even get a bite of it. Not this time. It's going to take structural integrity out of it. Ah, oh, jeez. Now we're ready to move, so uh, make sure everybody's clear. We don't want any pieces letting go, because it's a heck of a slope. When you have something that severe, when stuff goes wrong, it goes wrong in a big way. The biggest thing with that truck was the train tracks. Nothing can go down that hillside. They got some kind of an accident scene up here. Not quite sure how long that's gonna be. Oh, man. Just west of Golden, BC. Uh-oh. Colin Leach needs to get a very damaged trailer up onto the road. It might go. A trailer threatening to collapse onto the train tracks below. If something is to detach from your hook or break, and that thing rolls down onto the train tracks, that, that's going to cause you a bunch of stress. The last thing that I wanted to happen was it to break loose and beeline right for those train tracks. I was crossing my fingers that it would stay together. They've got the trailer on the road in one piece. Okay, here we go. Now Colin needs it to hold together long enough to make it to a pullout of the road. Oh. The trailer went really well and uh, surprisingly stayed together enough to get it here. But the hardest part, we're gonna go get the truck, go for round two, is still the head. Just try not to jostle that thing. Yeah, careful in there, eh? It's like a big toboggan, eh? I can't release it, it just wants to go down. On a mountain road west of Hope, Ken Monkhouse has lost his anchor truck. Our primary goal is to get this travel trailer out and get back down to the bottom of the road before the, the sun goes down. Clock's ticking. Ken needs to move his truck to finish the pull. Oh, I just got to figure a way, to, a way to stabilize it so it can't move. But the second driver ran out his winch lines. He can't stabilize the trailer. We're in logging country, so we got to think like loggers. And that's what we're going to do. So we need to uh, probably take that cable that you had hooked, the, one of the cables that broke, wrap it around one of those trees a bunch, and take it down to the, the tongue to hold it so that I can release and pull ahead. Without a tow truck to hold on, Ken's taking a chance on a tree. Just be careful, Rich. Just wrap it right around until it's tight. Daylight is our friend, darkness is our enemy in this situation. So we want to uh, we want to get things done here. That should be good, Rich. Yeah, get out of there, buddy. Ken slowly eases the tension on his line. 
the tree seems to hold, so Ken unhooks completely. Ken re-rigs. Now, he must pull 5,000 pounds working on a road covered in ice. And that trailer can pull me down the embankment. This is big pressure, big risk. Just have to be careful. I was going back down the hill again. After last year's near miss, Ken has won the back road rematch. I'm not gonna let another Forest Service road kick my ass ever. I don't care what it takes. Six hundred kilometers up Highway One. Gary and Colin get ready to tackle the destroyed cab. We want to make sure we got a good grab on it. Perched on the slope, right above the rail tracks. Just try not to jostle that thing. Yeah, careful in there, eh? It's one of the worst cabs I've seen. Do you think it'd be easier for you to grab it from the other side and then yeah. hand it over? It was a huge mess. Whatever you can get it through. Be very careful. The damage and the cab's position pose the biggest threat yet to the rail line. So it was imperative that not even a bolt go rolling down that hill towards the tracks. Okay. Colin will use his rotator to reach out and lift the cab up and off the hill. The rotator lifting it was a much better chance at getting it out of there rather than dragging it. Even with the rotator, whatever way you're picking this thing up, the basic fact is, is that the, the cab is not very structurally sound. You have to remember that this cab's been in a head-on. This is a start, are you guys uh, clear? Copy that call, you're good to go. Just watch it there. It was creaking and cracking and snapping and popping. Near the Alberta border on Highway 1. Just watch it there. Jamie's friends Gary and Colin Leach need to lift a shattered cab up a steep slope without dropping any debris on the railway tracks below. It was creaking and cracking and snapping and popping. Okay, I'm gonna swing it. Heads up. I'm just going to drive to the pull-up with it like this. It was the last piece of the, the puzzle. We have to get it into the pullout so we can open the highway. Oh, yeah. He's the man. All right, here we go. We're moving. It's a victory for Colin and his father, a man who shows the real spirit of heavy rescue. When you get bucked off a horse, the best way is just to get back on again. and. Uh... And I think that was true in my case. Gary has, you know, been through, you know, one of the worst accidents, you know, that anybody could go through. Here's a guy who had a really bad day. 
and he keeps on trucking. Six hundred kilometers southwest in Mission BC. What's happening, guys? What's going on, big guy? Ken's boss, Jordy DePerrin, wants a report on Ken's unconventional recovery. What happened? I was providing the vertical lift. Yep. He's providing the horizontal stability. We had it almost up at the top. I'm holding it. Rich pulls his truck ahead. Pulled ahead a little bit too far. The wire rope came out of the drums. I understand Jordy being a little bit concerned. It's a family business, and he doesn't want to be reflected upon poorly by two guys going out and making a mess of things. And you were chained up? I was chained up. Were you chained up? No. Didn't put tire chains on the truck when he should have put tire chains on the truck. So next time? Yep. These roads are not plowed. They're not maintained. It's winter driving. Uh, tire chains are a number one rule. Like, never go without tire chains on your truck going up there. Are the customers happy? Totally happy. Sent me a nice text thanking me. OK, buddy? <laughs> Hopefully I did you good. Richie? All right. All right, All right guys. Back near Hope. Never a dull moment on this highway. The ice storm is finally melting away. Wicked ice storm we had down here, boy. Cleaning up the damage will take weeks. Do you own a chainsaw? I'm sorry. <laughs> Do I own a chainsaw? But despite the mess in his yard, Jamie. Good afternoon, Jamie Davis. Is back up and running. Perfect, thanks. One of the best feelings is when the power's back on. And... Hey, Phil, northbound Highway 5 at the snow shed, heavy wrecker. We can get back to taking care of our customers, get back to the work we do, keep the roads open, keep people moving. Better get that Jamie Davis out there, he's number one. I just passed the tow truck, Jamie Davis, heading up. Big red machine going up the hill. Next time on Highway Through Hell. Serious crash. Ice storm aftermath brings chaos on Highway 1. Completely mashed. A remote recovery. It's not a road to be messing around on. Takes Colin up a dangerous road. Come on, get on your side. And a semi. It's gonna be tricky. Teetering over a 300 foot drop. Easy, easy. easy. Pulls Alan Gord. I don't like that. Right to the edge. He wants to go over. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 